Semi-skimmed milk was once thought to be so terrible that it was only given to prisoners. And now this, this has become the sort of mainstream milk that, that we consume. And if you consume fully skimmed milk, then God help you. I see people ordering things like skinny coffees or you know, low fat um, cakes. And they believe that by doing so, they have made themselves into the um, perfect examples of health. When really all they're doing is they're, they're now eating something which is full of sugar instead of full of fat. When something is low fat, you should be incredibly suspicious of it because that probably means that it's now full of sugar. Because when things have their fat removed, they taste awful. They taste terrible. So the only way that you can really make them taste bearable again is by filling them full of cheap flat, pointless sugar, which is the stuff that actually makes people fat. Fat does not make people fat. The consumption of fat is totally fine. We've been eating fat um, for thousands of years. For as long as we've been on the earth, we've been eating fat. It's a perfectly normal, healthy source of nutrition. Sugar is just an empty, flat um, ingredient, cheap ingredient, which contains no nutritional value. It's very easy to consume, very easy to overconsume. Fat, on the other hand, is a very rich, filling, delicious nutrient. It has a, a much better nutrient profile than sugar. Um, and it's harder to overconsume because it is more filling. You know, you feel more satisfied when you eat fat. Almost, almost everything we once believed about fat has now been proven to be wrong. Even the saturated fats, which were sort of the, the bogeyman of fats have now been shown in a, in a particular study, I forget the, the name of the study, but it was shown recently that the consumption of saturated fats and animal meat um, was actually shown to be associated with longer life. So diet science is a complicated thing. You'll get all sorts of different conflicting studies. What we know really though is that if you eat basic whole ingredients, the natural sort of stuff that we used to eat that we that our bodies have been accustomed to eating for thousands of years, you'll be fine. Sugar is a relatively new um, addition to our diets. And I think it's that really that is clearly the, the thing which is most responsible for our overconsumption. It's so easy to fill things with sugar and fill things with calories without even realizing it. And this, this war on fat, this insane war on fat has has been a, an immense aid for the sugar companies in getting more of their sugar into our products without us even realizing it. So why are we fat? Yes, sugar is a part of it. Um, but the simple thing is that we, we eat too much. So why do we eat too much? Well, I think it's because of the, the breakdown of the family. And yes, this is not just me going on a typical conservative rant about the breakdown of the family, but it, I think this makes a lot of sense. You think about how people used to eat in the past. They would have breakfast and they would have an evening meal dinner with their families. And they might have some kind of midday meal, lunch perhaps, or just some kind of snack in the middle of the day. And that would be it. They would eat probably three times per day and they wouldn't have anything in between. But now you'll see people grazing all the time. They'll be eating throughout the day, chocolate bars, crisps and so on, sandwiches. You'll see people walking around in the street eating things in between different things that they're going to. It's a constant eating fest nowadays because we've abandoned the, the tradition of eating a meal around a table with our family. That's gone. There are no official eating times anymore for a lot of people. It's just, uh, it's just open season the whole day. Eat anything you like. And exercise actually has very little to do with it. You see so many people going to the gym and running because they want to lose weight. Actually, plenty of studies have shown that when you exercise more, you end up eating more. And not just, you, you don't just eat so much that you compensate for the calories that you burned. You end up eating even more than that. So you offset the effect of the exercise. That's what most people end up doing. Because of course your appetite has increased because you've, you've exercised. I actually use exercise as a tool because I have the opposite problem. I struggle to eat enough food. So I actually use exercise as a tool in the day. I time it. I like to do it in the afternoon so that I have a boost of appetite so that I can eat more. 
So exercise has absolutely nothing to do with it. What matters is what you eat, how often you eat. So what do you do? I think you, you enjoy food as it was meant to be. You enjoy the full fat products as you should enjoy a full fat life. You should enjoy life in its, in its purest, greatest form. Why would you want to have semi-skimmed milk? Why would you want to have skimmed milk? It's, it's this philosophy I don't like, this idea of, oh, because I want to eat loads of food. I want to eat a very high volume of food. So I'll strip all the nutrition away from it. I'll strip it down. I'll strip my, uh, my full fat milk down so that I can consume twice the amount of it. Why? Why do we need to eat so much? Just have the, have the real thing, have the full fat thing, have the proper food. Just eat less of it and be grateful for it and eat it and eat it at a particular time in the day so that your body gets accustomed to eating normally, eating with a normal routine. So cut out the grazing and eat full, nutritious, homemade meals with, made with whole ingredients and live a full fat life.